We're going to look and see if there are there any easier ways to do that without having to do all of the derivative definition. And some of you probably already know that the answer is yes. So consider the following power functions and their derivatives. Do you see a pattern? And you probably don't have a neighbor to verify with right now, but I'd like for you to take a look at the functions that are on the left-hand side over here and compare them to their actual derivatives on the right-hand side. I'd like for you to stop the video and really study uh, what you see from the original function to the derivative and see if you can come up with a pattern or a way to find the derivative without going through the whole derivative process. So stop the video. After you have had time to think about that, resume the video and see if you come up with a pattern. In number one, we have a function x squared, and on the other page, we already looked at the derivative of that, and we found out that the derivative was linear. The derivative is 2x. For the second example, we have another quadratic function, 3x squared minus 2x plus 2, and the derivative is 6x minus 2. For number three, we have a uh, linear fun or a horizontal line, y equal to 5, and the derivative of that horizontal line is 0. That one's pretty easy. But hopefully by now you recognize that the pattern in every case, for example, if we look at number 1, x squared, if you take the power and multiply it by the coefficient, so in this case the coefficient is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, all right, now we're going to take the power that was originally there, we're going to decrease it by 1, and we get 2x to the first power, which is the derivative. So we have a power function. Notice that in all of these cases we have power functions, and we're going to apply what is called the power rule. In example number 2, we're going to do the same thing. So we have 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. If we apply the power rule that we just looked at in the first example, I'm going to multiply the power by the coefficient, so 2 times 3 is 6x. I'm going to decrease the old power by 1, so 2 minus 1 is 1. I'm going to do the same thing for the second, the power on the second variable, or second term is 1. I'm going to multiply that power by the coefficient, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and then I'm going to have x to the 1 minus 1, or x to the 0, which is 1, so the variable is gone. And then the derivative of a constant, as we can see in number 3, is always going to be 0, so that's where we get 6x minus 2. In number 3, we have our constant rule, which says the derivative of any constant is 0, because that constant is a horizontal line, and the derivative of any horizontal line is 0. In example number four, if you apply the power rule, it gets a little bit more tricky here, but if you follow the rule, it still applies. We're going to multiply the power by the coefficient. Four times negative one-half is negative two. We're going to decrease the power by one, so the old power is negative one-half, and we're going to decrease it by one, so we're going to express that as two halves, and you get negative three halves, so that's where that power came from. In the second term, we have a power function, so we're going to multiply 8 times 3 fourths, which will give me negative 6. We're going to take the current power of 3 fourths, and we're going to decrease it by 1, which is 4 fourths, and that's where negative 1 fourth comes from. In number 5, don't let the pi confuse you. Pi is, to, the 2 pi together, it serves as the coefficient of x. So the power of x is 1, and if you apply the power rule, 1 times 2 pi is 2 pi, and x to the 0 power is just 1, so you just get the coefficient. So in general, when you're finding a derivative, and this only works with a power function, when you find the derivative, you're going to take the power of n, multiply it by the coefficient, decrease the old power by 1, and that's your power rule, and that's a very easy, quick way to find the derivative of a power function without using that long definition of derivative. Now, when you deal with your homework, the first thing you're going to encounter is that not every power function is expressed nicely or it's not ready uh, to find the derivative. So let's take a look in example number one. I have 1 
two, three, four terms. Some of the terms are in power function form, others are not. So we're going to use some algebra to re-express that before we try to take the derivative. So 3x to the fifth is perfectly fine. We're going to use uh, changing radicals into exponent powers. This becomes x to the 3 fourths power. So again, I'm just taking every term and expressing it as a power function. The 5 is fine. And then 1 over x squared becomes x to the negative 2 power. So before I find the derivative, I'm going to make every term into a power function. The derivative of the first term by the power rule is 15x to the fourth. The derivative of the second term by the power, power rule, 2 times 3 fourths is 3 over 2. x to the, remember, we're going to take the current power, decrease it by 1, so we get negative 1 fourth. The derivative of 5, a constant, is 0. The derivative of the last term, negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2. Decrease the power by 1. That's another place where you can make a mistake. We're decreasing the power by 1, which means that you're going to get more negative. Um, again, I'd like for you to do these examples. Uh, pause the video, do the examples, and come back and see how you're doing. In problem number 2, I have a fraction, and notice that we didn't take any derivatives of fractions. We only have taken derivatives of power functions. So I'm going to use a little fourth grade math, and I'm going to take this fraction and break it into um, its into individual fractions, decompose the fractions, so to speak. The square root of x becomes x to the 1 half power. So each of these terms is going to get divided by x, and when I do that, I will get 3e, just a coefficient, x to the third power, so now we're in power function form, minus x to the negative sixth power, that's just using laws of exponents, and 4x to the, I have 1 half minus 2 halves gives me negative 1 half power. So now each of these terms is a power function, and I can find the derivative of each term individually, so the derivative here is, using the power rule, 3 times 3 is 9, decrease the power by 1, negative 6 times negative 1 is 6, decrease the power by 1 and go to negative 7, negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2, whoops, negative 2, decrease the power by 1, and you get negative 3 halves. I'm sorry, the board's being a little funky right now. See if I can write that more clearly. Okay, and so that's just a little practice on the power rule. Let's see if I have anything. Oh, yep, I do have a couple more examples. Um, in example number three, I have a multiplication problem, so it's not currently in power rule form. So I want to find the derivative of distribute, and I get, uh, whoops, I get 12 x to the fourth minus 4x cubed, and this notation simply is telling me to take the derivative of this function with respect to x, so the derivative is, by the power rule, 4 times 12 is 48, decrease the power by 1, multiply the power by the coefficient, 12, decrease the power by 1, x squared, and that is the derivative of that expression. If you have questions, please come and see me. I hope this video helps you out.